Welcome to the July garden update. Um, it's actually August 6th today. I'm a little bit behind. Had a lot of things going on personally in life right now and then just got home from a horse show. And, uh, so I've just been having a lot of organizing going on. But the garden has gone insane. So what I really want to share with you first and foremost is this squash garden. The new um, two metal uh, raised beds that I had put in this year have just gone insane. And I think a large part of it is because it's almost all direct compost inside. So what I had planted here, as you had seen last month, was three different varieties of squash, winter squash, and then also some summer squash, uh, the zucchini and yellow, uh, yellow squash as well. So what I have going on here is actually, well, what I planted was butternut squash, acorn squash, and spaghetti squash. And I'm not sure how the whole cross-pollination thing uh, works. It, it appears that I have some some stuff growing in here that isn't exactly what I thought I had planted. And I had bought from Baker Creek Seeds um, and Seed Exposure, so a couple of pretty reputable places. However, I did plant a couple of um, seeds that I had saved from some of my squash plants last year. So if there was some cross-pollination happening last year, this may be the result. So I can't wait to show you. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So if you remember this from last month, this garden space looks amazingly different. Um, this trellis, this original really tall one right here, uh, was the first trellis that I put down. And then I had mentioned to you guys that I wanted to add another one. So I did add a second um, tripod kind of trellis using the cattle panels inside of the bed. And when that wasn't enough, I really quick just threw up a 16 foot hog panel that I just bent in half. Um, and it's really not even supported by anything. It's just leaning against up one of the fences and the bottom of this um, raised bed. So as you can see, the squash it just continues to, to go. Um, it's very exciting. This has been a really fun undertaking and a new um, exceptional growth over here. But I just, uh, I wanted to share with you. So I'm hoping maybe you guys can help me identify what some of these are. Um, like I said, I had planted butternut squash, spaghetti squash, and acorn squash. And if you can see, I do believe I have an acorn squash growing right up under here. It's a little hard to see. Um, it's the only of the acorn varieties that I've seen so far. And I really think at this point I should be seeing some. Sorry, I've got crazy squash leaves just all over me. <laughs> So, but what I'm really curious about is if these may be butternut squash. I mean, butternut squash do have that elongated part um, before it becomes bulbousy on the bottom. And my guess is that maybe it's some sort of variety like that. Um, my aunt said maybe it was trying to find the sun and maybe that's why it's gotten so long. But it's, it's exciting. I can't wait to see. I mean, shoot guys, some of these... Some of these lengths to that individual squash is just massive. I mean, from the tip of my hand down to my elbow, it's, I don't even know how long that is, but it's, it's significant. I can't, I can't even believe the growth that's going on here. It's really awesome. Let me show you a little bit more with the squash before we move on to some other squash varieties. So again, these are some of the ones that I'm wondering are some sort of um, cross-pollination. They definitely are shaped and looking very much like a summer squash. But I do have other true summer squash growing in here. I'll take you around the back. Like these are clearly summer squash. Or I'm sorry, I keep saying summer squash. I mean spaghetti squash. These are clearly spaghetti squash. They're already starting to yellow a little bit. Here's a really fun variegated one down here. Um, all sorts of little guys popping up all over the place. But then we have these really dark, really cool variegated speckly ones. And some of them are massive. They're like the size of pumpkins. Um, so I'm just really curious to see what these are going to look like when they're cured and off the vine. And when I cut them open and, and taste them and see what's going on. Here's some more going on in here. So it's just a very exuberant amount of squash all over these trellises. It's, it's just really exciting. While I'm over here, I'll just share with you my first itty bitty whoop, bell pepper. And if that's all I get, I don't even care because I'm just excited about what's going on in the garden this year. Here's some sweet peppers. Looking 
looking good and ready to harvest here shortly. Three of them on there. Um, none of my jalapenos are doing super hot, but uh, just gonna keep watching them. Uh, a little bit on the watermelon update. I had to unearth them a bit from everything else going on with the squash. So I'm not sure if I have enough season left to get anything going on with it. This was a cantaloupe, I believe. It is flowering, so maybe we'll get something out of it. Um, but what I'll say last about all of this winter squash is it's just, it's just so massive. I've literally been cutting back extra vines and a lot of leaves to give some more airflow in there um, at least once a week, sometimes twice a week. Because even here you can see that it's taking over my, these are pole beans that are trying to grow in here still. And I am finally getting some pole beans to harvest, but I don't want the squash to overtake the pole beans. So well, moving on over here to all the bush beans. I've been able to harvest three times off of these so far. So far I've just done them um, freezer packed. Uh, I'm hoping to get another big grouping of it, another big enough crop so I can do some canned ones. But the bush beans have done really well. I love bush beans. They're just very hands off, very easy. You just kind of let them do whatever they want. You don't really have to trellis them or prune them. I'm sure maybe if I did some of that, maybe it would help, but uh, they're doing really well. <laughs> Here's just all that squash coming over from the other side. And there is some pole beans mixed into there. But here we go. Um, the carrots looking pretty good. I'm actually gonna leave them in the ground as long as possible. Uh, I've seen some really interesting videos about just harvesting them throughout the winter as you need them in leaving them in the garden. So I'm going to try that. Now what I wanted to share about the zucchinis. I need to come in and do my pruning. Uh, I do that every couple days every time I'm harvesting. But you can see this is what I was talking about last month. How much, oh my gosh look, some more green beans hanging out back there. <laughs> uh, so this is what your zucchini starts to look like as you harvest it um, throughout the year and prune it. So like here, I've got this nice zucchini to um, harvest. I like to grab them about this size. This is maybe six to seven inches. Um, Cause I do bread, but that's not the main reason why I have them. Like this one never did get pollinated. So that one, when I come in and prune is gonna come off as well. And then any of these leaves that are beef and probably this one on the back. Anything that's beyond your last fruit will get cut back and then it will encourage space and airflow for these other zucchinis that are trying to grow behind this one. And this is why the tomato cage actually comes in really good handy to keep your zucchini thriving because as you are pruning it, uh, it the vine continues and this allows all of your fruit to stay off the ground and you can utilize more space. So I've been doing that with all of them. There's another giant zucchini hiding back there. I will say I've had a pretty poor um, harvest of yellow squash. See in this, this tomato cage is actually falling over because I had too many plants. You remember I just couldn't bear to thin some out. So now I've had too many growing through this cage and it's actually spilling out onto that side. So, um, oh, and there's a carrot down there. Look at that carrot, that looks great. It's just so exciting. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna need to sacrifice one of these plants and I'm gonna choose which one is looking the least healthy and the least prolific and just finally pull that one out just to keep these yellow squash going longer into the season. That was definitely a mistake on my end by not taking care of it uh, when they were all coming in. It just was hard to think about pulling brand new plants, you know. So anyway, this is what's going on on this front garden space. And now I'll take you to the back. Real quick, this is just one more spot that I wanted to share with you. This is actually the front of my house on one of the flower beds. This time of year, I don't have any other bulbs planted in here, so I don't have any more flowers coming in. Um, but I had an abundance of onion sets given to me by a friend. And so I actually decided to plant some of the onions in here in the front. And while the dogs have ran through some of it and this area is not as heavily composted as others, I wanted to share just another idea. If you run out of vegetable gardening space, you can utilize other areas of your property or even a garden bed in front of your house. While this might look like it might be grass looking or whatever from, from you know, the outside uh, for people that don't know what's going on in here, uh, you can just utilize more space to grow some more food. I thought that that was kind of a neat way to um, grow some more onions 
and get more harvest. Quick side shot video of whiskey just being beautiful out in the field. The other thing that I haven't shared with you guys before were my pear trees. These have been here since I bought the property six years ago and the trees were prolific at the time but they're even bigger now. I understand that they need some pruning. I've tried to prune them in the past. I really need to try and get an arborist out here to help me uh, get these as squared away as they should be but I just wanted to share these beautiful Bartlets that come off of the trees. I'm just so blessed to have these wonderful pear trees right here on the side. This is right behind the new garden space over there. Um, this is just a great little little corner of the property. I just love it. There's actually two of the Bartlett trees and another one. You guys can help me identify. These are the other pears that I get. They're definitely not like the Bartlett's. They don't get as big. They're kind of brownish. Um, they're a little softer. These ones I tend to just can or give to the animals because they're never as good and I'm not sure what is quite the deal with these but just thought I'd share the pear trees that's right between the back of the main garden and the new garden over here. All right, so now I'm in my main garden space. Um, the new gardens that I've already shown you with the squash are actually kind of stealing the show this year. So my main garden is not giving me as much excitement as it normally would. Yeah, I've got my, t my potatoes, my tomatoes, um, my lettuce is coming out of here. I actually need to replant some more lettuce so I have a good fall harvest. Um, and everything's prolific in here. It's just not quite as exciting as what's going on over there. But let me show you some of the things that have worked and some of the things that have not seemed to work and a couple of surprises along the way. This is my sad Brussels sprout spot. I actually ended up tying this one up and I'm leaving these two as experiments. The other four I had pulled out and I've harvested the leaves off of have eaten and salvaged. Um, but I'm kind of leaving these just as an experiment to see what happens to them as the fall arrives because they are still getting more Brussels sprouts along the stalk. And I really should tie this one up now that I'm looking at it, um, keep it out of the ground and, and just see what happens. But I did let it flower, it's going to seed. I just kind of want to see what's going to happen with this. Now one of the exciting things is my red cabbage, this was all planted in March and I did not get any cabbage heads formed. I actually found some really great uses for cooking these really beautiful cabbage leaves. Really delicious. Um, that's actually just sauteed like, like you could treat it like a collard green. Saute it for like five minutes, put in some onion, and actually I was putting in a duck egg as well, salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, it's so good, even the kids were eating it. But what I'm excited about and what I'm surprised about is that they're starting to form heads. Um, and the one final plant back there is a little shaded, needs a little bit of help. But I'm very excited. I'm happy that I left these in to just experiment and see what happened. And I'm really hopeful that I'm going to end up getting a fall crop of red cabbage. I'm very happy I left those in. Now here's another one of the experiments. It's a little hard to see the corns behind it. But do you remember this little tomato plant from last month? I shared with you that I used one of these one of these pieces that I took off from a tomato plant behind me. You, you usually trim these off right in the crotch there and you can actually bury the whole thing into the ground and it's supposed to create another plant. And this one is doing really well. It's obviously not as huge as the ones that got started before it, but it is flowering and it does have its first teeny little tomato. So this has been a really fun experiment to play with and watch this little I guess you can call it propagation work. Um, you can just create more tomato plants from an existing plant. Now the other thing I'll share, I was not hopeful about my corn because it was not looking very good by the 4th of July and even some of them in the back are not doing super well. My hesitation over here was that this is one of my shadier beds, but it was what was available when I was able to get some corn. So perhaps that'll be a lesson learned. I'm not sure how this is doing in, the, in terms of corn. I don't know if all of this spreading out is normal, if the corn is going to be formed right here. But again, this is just, it's fun to see the growth. It's fun to experiment, just see what happens with it all. This is what the lettuce looks like when you keep harvesting it just from the bottom leaves. It just keeps getting tall. A lot of people do the cut and come again method and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I wanted to experiment, see a theme this year, a lot of experimentation with uh, just taking off the bottom leaves. 
Now these are actually, you can see this one's starting to flower. It's going to try and bolt a little bit. They're all really bolting actually. I mean with how tall that they're getting, it's a sign of bolting. And I did already come through and pull off a lot of the flowering tops. But these are going to get pulled out here shortly and I'm going to reseed some new lettuce in here. But just look, have you ever seen a lettuce stalk? What it looks like if you just let it go. It's kind of crazy. Snap peas are all done in the back. It's been too hot for that. These are all the tomato plants. The sunlight is a little hard to really see what's going on, but we have some good fruit set, but nothing is blushing yet. That's okay, I usually don't get tomatoes until later August, which is late for some, but pretty average for me. I did replant some more Swiss chard. Um, the other ones, they have done well. They've started coming back, but they started bolting again. So I'm just letting them do their thing. Closer to the fall, I'm going to uh, cut those back again. And the other thing that I did back here was replant some Brussels sprouts. So I'm not giving up the Brussels sprout endeavor quite yet this year. I want to see what happens if we do a late summer plant, um, if that gives us the fall crop that I'm hoping for. The perennial beds are looking great. This actually looks like a huge mess, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. I have a bunch of leeks planted all around. Um, they're looking pretty good. These feathery looking things are the asparagus. As you remember, asparagus, you leave for the first two or three years. Um, so that's why that kind of just looks like a hot mess. But the artichokes are looking really nice. This is the only of the five plants that has produced any sort of actual artichokes yet, but regardless, I'm excited about it. These are all the potatoes in the grow bags. They're getting really close to harvesting. I actually emptied one out the other day to see what was going on because it was actually looking kind of like this one where it's starting to look a little sad, brown, and toppling over. And I did get some nice red potatoes from it. So I'll make a video of when those all get harvested. And then I'm trying a second potato crop. That's what these new grow bags are for. I had some more uh, potatoes in the house that were starting to sprout. So I put them in. They should be a 90 day variety. So that I should be okay to get a harvest before winter really comes. My basil is getting all nice and bushed out. Just love basil. Um, pepper plants are doing mildly okay. I get a few every now and then. These are looking pretty okay. Nothing huge and spectacular. And then these are just some more tomato varieties over here. Uh, you can see here's a little blushing cherry tomato. It's barely starting to come on. And then the ground cherry plant is looking really nice. You can see these goofy little fruits that they produce. I, from what I understand, they'll just drop when they're ready. I honestly don't remember what this was here. I think it was some sort of pepper. We'll see what happens. The last thing... The last thing that I'm excited about to share is the eggplants. Here's the eggplant that's bearing some fruit. Some nice cute little eggplants. I have to look up what variety these were again to know how big they're expected to get because they're not super big. And I have some more onions grown in here but they're kind of getting toppled over and masked by the eggplant. But these onions are starting to do nice. This is my second um, planting of onions this year. And they're, they're looking pretty okay in this bed. So that's exciting. But this eggplant eggplant plant <laughs> is not forming any fruit yet. The cucumbers are looking nice. I have the regular slicers and then the lemon cukes available. That was kind of an accident. They, they were tagged incorrectly. So the one last thing that I really wanted to share was my clematis is in bloom. I love when the clematis is in bloom. Uh, it's kind of gone this way on the fence instead of going up over the archway, um, but I don't mind that. There's all these little buds coming in still. So I just love how these are looking. They, it's fun to see the vision finally come together. Uh, things that you put in the ground, especially climbers that are gonna take a long time to get ready. Um, so a little bit of a short and sweet video here for you. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing the progression of my garden. I hope your garden is doing really well. Uh, we're really in the thick of it right now. The final kind of push before September comes. This should be a really nice prolific month. I thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video.